This is the Catholic Wire. The young woman. Where do you have to look at? Okay, let's get this started. Hello at the Young Catholic Woman Show. No, just the Young Woman Show. Uh, but you're Catholic maybe too, so that's great. Hello. Hi. So welcome to this first video. Ah, forget that. Hello and welcome to the Young Woman Show. It's by Catholic Wire and I'm Veronica. I just touched this microphone. I hope you didn't hear that. I'm Veronica and I'm a musician and music teacher. I am originally not from America. Maybe you hear that, the way I talk. I'm not from America. I'm from Austria. So not Australia where all the kangaroos are, but Austria where um, the mountains are, sound of music is. So Austria in the center of Europe. That's where I'm from and I'm spending some time here in America right now and we just thought we'd give this a try. So this is the first video of our series, The Young Woman, and I'm really excited to start this. So let's give this a try and we'll just start with um, a quote of the day. Do what is necessary, then do what is possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. <laughs> it is by St. Francis de Sales, no, St. Francis of Assisi, sorry. Um, and I think it's really just so fitting for this situation here right now because it's the first video and we're just We're just trying to do something what we think is necessary. We're trying to do this video and we just uh, want to share ordinary day-to-day -day thoughts with you and We hope you take some advantage out of it. So have fun Blast and it's coffee with cinnamon. Give it a try. It's really good. Mm. Just added some cinnamon powder. Cinnamon powder. Um, and so the next point what I'm gonna talk about today is um, our story of the day. We do this in every video. And I take you back to the 1930s in Germany. So that was when Hitler was there and that was the Nazi time. And that was when my great grandmother lived. She had seven children, six girls and a boy, and she was a widow because her husband died because of wounds from First World War. So she lived there in this crazy time on her own. And um, while well, the Nazis wanted all the kids to go into special groups, the youth groups. I don't know if you've learned about that or heard about that, but yeah, that was this. There were there were a lot of youth groups, and. The, they, the children who went there, they did a lot of sport activities and the Nazis, they also tried to take the children away from Catholic faith, kind of. So they made fun, about, fun, of, fun, about, fun of Catholic faith and they also uh, didn't go to church on Sundays, they had other activities on Sundays. So my great-grandmother, she didn't put her children into these youth youth groups and that the consequence of that was that the major of the town where she lived in he called her every week sometimes several times a week called her every week to ask her why don't you put your kids into these youth groups and he threatened her and say well said well if you don't put your kids into these youth groups well, we're going to put you in concentration camps we take away all your children you're all gonna die, kind of like that. So it was this psycho game what he was doing every week over and over again. But my great-grandmother, she stayed strong and didn't put her children into these groups because she didn't want to she didn't want her children to lose Catholic faith. So that's a really beautiful, strong example of a woman, a mother, who wants the best for her children, and that's she wants her children to get to heaven, to make it to heaven. Um, and so she, 
yes, she survived. They didn't put her into concentration camps and all her children survived. And so my great grandmother, pus my great grandmother uh, gave the Catholic faith onto her, um, her, her daughter, my grandmother, who gave it to my mother and my mother who gave it to me. So that's a really uh, inspiring story for all of us. And I want to end this story with a quote from St. Augustine. Right is right, even if nobody's doing it. And wrong is wrong, even if everybody's doing it. So maybe that helps us a little bit in our decisions, how we go through a day and live our Catholic faith out there in this world. There are steps. So, and I don't know if you've heard about Jordan Peterson. He's not a saint. <laughs> he's living at our times right now, and he's a kind of philosopher, motivation speaker on YouTube. And um, I think he also converted to Christianity. I don't think he converted to Catholic faith. Maybe one day, pray for that. Um, but he uh, has several um, videos on YouTube, and I. I used to listen to them, just these motivation videos, how you get stronger to strengthen your mind, your thoughts. And he once said this quote that really stick to my mind. Um, start somewhere, clean your room. <laughs> so that means before you want to change the world, before you want to go out there and change the world, start with yourself, start with cleaning your room. And I actually, I made my bed today. I cleaned up my room today because I didn't want to say something here and I don't do it myself. Um, so I, yeah, I try to take that serious. And so if we want, before we want to criticize somebody else, we have to look at ourselves and try to make the best of ourselves. And that's just a nice secular quote um, that can inspire us too. Hopefully, it inspires you. <laughs> we decided to prepare some tongue twisters for me. We say tongue breakers in German. Funny. It's really yeah, interesting because I've never saw them, so I've, nev I've never seen them. So, English tongue twisters for not English native speaking. Native American? No, not Native American. For, uh, well, yeah, you know what I mean, for uh, Austrian woman. <laughs> so I'm gonna read this now and we'll see what comes out. I've never seen them before. <clears throat> Peter Piper picked a pep of, pi 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 of, of pickled peppers. <laughs> a pack of pickled peppers Pickled peppers Peter Piper, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked pick, picked a pack of pickled peppers, where's the pack of pi, pi, pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> okay, well, I try. I'm gonna get better. Promise. And what I want to share with you too is a special book. I found it here in America when I came here. It's called The Golden Councils of St. Francis de Sales. Um, maybe some of you know St. Francis de Sales from the book Philotea, a really great book for women too. Um, so I, I really like St. Francis de Sales. Um, and when I found this book, it was really a little lifesaver for me because it was just so encouraging through some times I had, times of anxiety, times of being really down. Mm, and I want to share with you a little, little part of the first chapter, Peace and Courage. And then I'll tell you why I like it that much. Or maybe you just realize why I like it that much. I hope it helps you. Peace and Courage. Do not look forward to the changes and cha chances of this life with fear. Rather, look upon them with, with strong hope that as they arise, God, whose child you are, will deliver you from them. He has kept you hitherto 
Do you but hold fast to his dear hand, and he will lead you safely through all things. Where you cannot walk, he will bear you in his arms. Do not look forward to what may happen tomorrow. The same everlasting Father who cares for you today will take care of you tomorrow and every day. Either he will shield you from suffering, or he will give you unfailing strength to bear it. Be at peace then and put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations. So that's how the book starts. It's just um, wisdom of St. Francis de Sales in a little booklet, just all together here. And the next uh, heading is Patience with Self, God's Will and Trials, Confidence in God, and Disquiets and Fears, about fears and temptations. That's really, really helpful. And what I did, um, I read it in my morning meditation. So it's just a little bit of spiritual reading in the morning. A good way to start your day. Um, I read about, I read in it in the morning and just took out some two or three sentences that really helped me and uh, inspired me. And I try to keep them over the day and try to repeat them over the day, especially if anxiety comes up or whatever. If you're if you're struggling with some special temptation, um, I try to repeat those sentences, this wisdom and. It really helped me, so maybe it's something good for you too. With Roe versus Wade, uh, there's a lot going on right now in America, and especially um, a lot of evil things are exposed to. And I scrolled through my Instagram and I, I saw this one video of a woman with an, talking about an abortion altar. And so I'm going to look at that now and just saying some stuff about it because it shocked me really when I saw that I thought, what, how, how, what an abortion alter. So it's this YouTube channel of this woman and she's talking about how to prepare for an abortion, how to kind of bless your abortion pills and how to deal with all the uh, the anxiety that's coming with it after an abortion. She's, she's really admitting that a lot of women suffer with abortion. But instead of trying to find alternatives or whatever, um, she's turning this in, into this crazy um, kind of religion thing to make an altar for your abortion. So I'm going to watch this now. And yeah. Building an altar for your abortion can be a really cathartic procedure. So I like to always... It could be like, she says, building an, an abortion altar could kind of a healing procedure for you after an abortion. Have a candle going. Always a candle. Altar. And you know what's the most disgusting thing? She has a picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe on her altar. That's so, that's so wrong. So there's always light within the darkness. There's always light in the darkness with her candle. I feel so sorry for this woman. Really, I feel so sorry about that. I also really like to add the abortion pills themselves to the altar. She puts the abortion pills on the altar. To really bless the pills that we're going to be taking into our bodies during this process. To bless the pills that are going into her body. <clears throat> process. And place the container of which you plan to put the, the products of conception or the fetal remains within to catch that after you've passed it. And Did you hear that? So she has a container where she catches all the fetal um, is she t stuff that's coming out of her body sorry i don't know how to say it in english but she tries to catch all the stuff that's coming out of her body in this container and put it on the altar save it for later when we when we find a way to to bury or otherwise um to where we find a way to properly dispose of the fetal remains in a way that gives reverence and respect and support to this to this sacred to bury experience. this container maybe later so the abortion experience. 
What, you, what was that in the end to, if you regret it? In support to this, to this sacred abortion experience. Oh no, sacred abortion experience. So that's how far we're, that's so, it's so crazy. You know, it's not that we're now in the situation where women say abortion is your right and it's good for you and we need this right. Now we are at this point where women say, um, yeah, maybe it hurts women but it's still a good thing and we need this and it's a sacred thing. Oh yeah, one thing, I watched other videos of her too and um, she said, in one video she said, one thing we have to know is that there was always abortion even in ancient times. So that really reminds me of this one quote that I shared with you just before with wrong is wrong even if everybody's doing it and right is right even if nobody's doing it. So. That doesn't mean that the Romans some thousand years ago did it right. Just because they did it doesn't mean that it was right. So I feel really, really sorry for her and other women who just do that. So let's try to say a prayer and not to judge them harshly. Like, like Jesus said, we have to judge the sin, but not the sinners. So um, I know it's not easy because we... I really don't understand it. Maybe you feel the same. I, I don't understand it, but um, um, just being mad at them or calling them bad names doesn't make it better. So let's try to um, say a prayer for them and pray for their conversion, for their healing, and just with everything they're going through, pray for them. I think that's the best that we can do. So yeah, crazy stuff going on out there. Well, and next I have a little song for you. It's uh, the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic. And when I first discovered this song, it's a, a one hour loop. When I first discovered it, I really listened to it a whole hour and just listened to it during my, the, the things that I had to do during the day, um, during cleaning maybe, or just doing to, um, when I'm doing some stuff. So I, I listened to it over and over again, and I even tried to learn it. I even tried to learn the song. So I tried to learn the Aramaic lyrics. I uh, didn't success so far, but I maybe I should do it again. Yeah, so I tried it last summer. I will try it again, actually. Good idea. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. It's really beautiful. So yeah, that's the Lord's Prayer, Our Father in Aramaic. Maybe you want to listen to it. There's a lot of nice um, Aramaic songs on YouTube. And it's just so fascinating because it was a language our Lord spoke. Sorry, And it's just so far away, kind of. It feels so far away. So uh, I wonder if we speak Aramaic in heaven. Maybe I should ask Father. <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah, so just, yeah, if you want to listen to it, give it a try and it's really nice. Since it is summer and there is a lot of evil summer fashion out there, we want to practice the virtue of chastity. Let us remember that our body it's a temple of the Holy Ghost. So um, the Holy Ghost is dwelling within us when we're in a state of grace. And it just should help us to remember that we're precious and everything precious, like uh, a diamond is hidden under tons of rocks, for example. And pearls are hidden in a shell deep down in the sea. So Everything precious is hidden, covered. And as soon as it's uncovered or just, 
yeah, you have it, like, like you have it, you can have it easily, it gets less worth and cheaper. So let's try to see us, see ourselves as pearls, diamonds, um, which need to be covered because we're not cheap to get, right? We're, we're precious and um, we want others to treat us like this too. I once heard this very good quote, um, dress yourself um, like you want other women to be dressed when they're around your man. Um, so you don't have to be married or so, or to have a boyfriend to make use of this quote, but it just kind of helps, okay, how I want to dress in front of men, of others. Um, do I want to be a good example for other women too? And yeah, so we young women can really change something there. How do we practice it? We first can make small offerings during the day to just remind us of needs uh, to keep our body in check. And second, we could also watch our desire to look good so that we're not want to look too good to get pride or whatever. Yeah, and third, to just watch um, how we're dressed, um, how, what we want to show others and what we expect from others. So these are the three points that I want to give with you uh, about the virtue of this month. We have here a prayer from the Catholic Girl's Guide from Father Lassans. And I, I invite you to join me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I humbly thank Thee, most merciful and bountiful God, for all the benefits which Thou hast conferred upon me. Above all, I thank Thee for having graciously preserved me during the past night and strengthened me a new body and soul. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, and that's kind of it for today. So... If you want to share something with us or comment something, well, you can comment in the comments down there below, but you can also always write us. We're happy to hear from you. Don't hesitate. And yeah, if you want to share something, maybe with you, if you want to do a video here, just message us. And yeah, we're so excited to hear from you. We're just so excited how this all will go on. And well, hopefully we'll see you next time. God bless you. Goodbye. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, well, we'll see if that works, huh? Thank you for listening to The Catholic Wire. If you have found the show helpful, please say a prayer for all our collaborators. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels and share with your friends. For questions and comments, you may contact us at thecatholicwire.org.